hello guys and welcome back to project monaco yes we're back so soon as i said i'm going to try and do a couple of episodes and release them back to back as best as i can and see what we can do leading up to christmas where there's a bit more time for me to work on monaco so last week if you remember we worked on the beautiful monaco ville area with this beautiful cathedral done by titan and all in all i think it works out really nice as I said last week, the fact we've now got a lot of people here has really changed the look of Monaco. It looks alive, it looks buzzing, and I'm really pleased with the difference it makes just by doing that. It does hinder the frames a little bit, as you can imagine, but in terms of the overview of the whole build so far, it looks 10 times better in my opinion, and I'd certainly look forward to hearing what you guys think now we do have a bit more life in Monaco. Now the LUT has changed back and forth many times, I know there's a few comments about it and we'll talk about that a bit later on. But today's episode we're going to be working on this segment here, we're going to be working on the helicopter port. Now when I started this project there was a few locations that really took my eye and fancy and this particular corner really did and I think it's just how unique it looks. You've got the hotels on one side, you've got this heliport sticking out just randomly out of the the waterfront and this huge tent in the background really really unique very interesting and we're going to work on that today so let's jump into episode 27 helicopters and let's get things going so as always thank you again for the comments and likes on the last video if you didn't see it by all means have a quick look at that before watching this because it'll all make sense back to back so the first plan of this build was to build up the hotel front I wanted to build this up first to sort of get a, a better view in and sort of work out the sort of area that we can work with here. And a combination of these hotels and these beautiful pools that are on the workshop, a variety of these really did make this area come to life. And it's, it's quite interesting when you're working in between these spaces here because it's quite difficult to fit in everything that you want. Now, if you looked on Google Maps, this area in particular has some gardens, it has some pools, has some sort of seating area and the swimming pools, etc. And I, tried in, I was trying to find a way of doing that myself, but not going too heavy on the prop count. So I did find this little Japanese garden, pre-built park from the workshop, which works quite nicely in this area. The area is a, there is an area here that pretty much works exactly as you see here. And I was just trying to find a way to bridge the gap between being too heavily detailed and not detailed enough. And I think I think this was the best way in which to do so. Um, the paths themselves obviously take up some of the area. The remaining grass that's left in between as well as putting down some of the, uh, the orange concrete also works. And I didn't want to get into a situation where it was all purely concrete or all purely grass. I want to try and combine the two together because that's what Monaco is all about. There's not a area that is 100% one type of, of land. So that was what the idea was there. Now, we're actually getting quite quickly into the main part of this build, in my opinion, which is the heliport. And this area here, I was just trying to make a, a road network that worked well enough to function, but also look realistic to this. And the heliport itself, I had to decide on a sort of main building area. And I actually used this post office. I think it's a post office or post posting area for it. And that building I've used in my Isle of Wight series. And I really do love the model. Not so much Mediterranean based, but again, this is just a, a heliport, which doesn't really need to have that. Um, so I've used that and also up the top there you'll see I actually went with the Formula 1 gar garages which worked really nicely in my opinion for this, this particular area. Um, and I was trying to find a way here of creating the outer perimeter of the, the actual helipad area and in the end the keys worked best and I have used those already on the island. I could have used the Monaco ones which we had created by Mick Crosshill but I thought that this was a bit more of a better solution for it. So I wanted to make this functional yet realistic um, and it was a bit of a challenge I must say because the difficulty I have with Monaco and the theme I'm using is I don't actually have a true grey concrete look because I'm using the orange um, theme for my concrete 
everything that I place down, probably asphalt, anything like that will be the orange color. So I went with these um, building constructions to try and break that up and we use the concrete slabs as well. I think maybe by Creative Decks, I forget who it's from, but they were the best of what we had to choose from that I could find. Um, and the difficulty that I have with these is you can't actually place anything on top in terms of decals. So I had to be a bit creative in doing so because I still wanted to make this look realistic and have the lines painted, etc. Um, which, you know, needs to be done on these sort of areas to make it look realistic. And this segment here, the out lying or whatever you want to class it as the actual helipads that go out to sea they are actually not they're not actually like this um, they are more of a, a sort of a bridge out to the sea but I thought this looked more cleaner and carried on with our theme of the the area so I kept it just like that just to make it a bit more simpler now whilst we just detail this area let's go back to the comments earlier about the LUT now, the LUT has changed a bit since we started the project and I still haven't decided what I like and the reason for that is because certain areas we have built look better with certain LUTs than others and I guess the reason for that is because some areas were building quite a lot on the sort of hillside, the grass areas whereby other LUTs look better than perhaps a previous LUT that we used more for downtown where the orange was perhaps too bright um, and that is a struggle I must say defining the best LUT for Monaco has been a struggle um, the one created by um, Creative Dex was brilliant you know it, it works perfectly well but I have found that some of the cinematics I've done I've kind of adjusted a little bit more in the ultimate eye candy as opposed to changing the LUT we're still using the Monaco LUT let me um, just put that out there. We haven't changed the actual type of light. We've just changed the actual settings within the game itself. Um, and I'm kind of stuck in terms of what to do in terms of the perfect LUT for this. I'm not sure I'll decide upon one, to be fair. It's um, a difficult situation to be in. So I may just carry on as I am and just tweak the LUT. Um, or the ultimate eye candy settings in terms of the brightness and contrast depending on the episode itself because sometimes it just looks better with a little change on that so I think that's what we're going to kind of finalize in terms of the LUT for Monaco um, we are using the official Monaco LUT um, but we do change things a little bit in terms of the ultimate eye candy look so I think we'll leave it there. If anyone's got any suggestions or comments on it, let me know in the comment section below. It's always good to hear your feedback. Um, but I think that's where we're gonna probably gonna leave <laughs> the luck conversation for now. Um, but back into the build, you'll see we also use the Monaco, um, well, the Monaco, the, the racing red and white curbs as well, which actually are, as you see in real life, I haven't just randomly used them. Um, it is very much the same in real life Monaco, um, which is starting to become a bit of a, a common phase in that phrase now, isn't it? The um, in real life Monaco, maybe that's the um, the hashtag for this <laughs> this series. Um, but yes, the other issue I had was placing down the fences because the land itself actually stops before the keys um, commence. The conform the, the actual terraforming based fences and gates actually dipped down as you saw early in that video so we went with the larger longer ones which um, are more prop based which means they don't conform to the terrain which is perfect for what we're working on now this section here i decided to use the monaco pier that we used over at the main port uh, made by mick crosshill um, and just trying to adjust it to extend outwards across the sea um, I did just pretty much copy and paste it with um, with move it and procedure objects eventually, which you know isn't perfect because the end of each of these piers has this bigger block, which you know you can. I, I felt I can get away with it in terms of the actual look of it in the end. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think about it, but I think it works okay. 
Um, there's nothing else out there that looks similar to this. There's nothing I could really recreate, especially in terms of keeping the prop count down. Um, so we, I think we'll keep with this. It's, it's a, it's, it looks okay. It's following the trend of what the previous area looks like. Um, and then I use the network terrain um, networks, what well, sorry, the, <laughs> the terrain networks themselves here to create some false land, which means we could lower down these into the ground and it looks more realistic as it does in real life Monaco. <laughs> So next up is detailing the sort of hotel front areas here. Now this area here has some sort of sort of grass and tree area. So I wanted to try and recreate that as well. Like I said earlier, it's trying to find that balance between too much detail and not enough to make it still look realistic. And as this is the sort of front area of Monaco and it's something that you'll take in first when you're looking at the map, for example, as opposed to something deep into downtown Monaco. I wanted to make this look a bit more detailed than perhaps I will be doing in other areas, which leads me nicely onto the poll that we did last week with regards to how we go about building the backdrop of Monaco. And what I meant by backdrop, I know you guys understood it anyway from your replies, but um, a backdrop in terms of I don't want to be creating everything 100% detailed in Monaco because it's just not possible. Um, the game will either self-destruct or blow up or I will probably never finish the project itself. Um, so it was quite close in the end actually in the results. So 46% of you suggested we should do the backdrop as a normal episode. 37% said off camera and the rest of you, 16% mentioned about doing it in a live stream. Now I still like the idea of doing a live stream because I do want to do a bit more of that over the sort of festive period of time because I'm gonna have a bit more time to myself and certainly a solid week's worth where I don't have to do any actual grown up work stuff which is always good so if you want to see some live streams hit me up let me know in the comment section or hit that like button to indicate that you want to see more of this and i'll see what i can set up and also let me know do you prefer watching live streams on youtube or twitch and i think we'll do a poll for that because i am actually quite intrigued to see how many of you guys watch streams on twitch or youtube because i do have both but i can't stream on both platforms at the same time so going back to the poll results a lot of you are saying to still do it in normal episodes and obviously some of you have set off camera so i think we'll do a bit of both i think the more interesting parts we shall do um in a normal episode and perhaps we'll combine it with something a bit more exciting that we're building and do the backdrop as the second part of that video i think that'll work quite nicely and it's it is something that we have done previously so that's kind of been what we've done already but again doing some bits off camera i think are going to save us time and effort and energy so yeah thank you all for your contribution on that poll um hit me up on the next one and we'll see where that takes us next so getting back into what you can see on screen now as i said we're just trying to detail these segments a little bit more more better um and you'll notice there is a typical trend. I mean, I like using these grass planters because they look nice. Um, they feel Monaco-esque when you start adding the palm trees and the sort of mediterranean tree bushes, etc., around it. And it's a nice filler. If you're having trouble trying to fill spaces and not, you don't want to keep it as the standard terrain, 
adding paths and these planters with some trees around really does make a huge difference and it fills quite a, a large gap in quite well despite not actually using a lot of space um, because you when you've got a path around a big area of grass you kind of expect that you kind of the, the path kind of breaks it down and it seems more like two sort of grass areas as opposed to one large one which is the issue that I had at the start with Monaco so that's worked out quite nicely and I've kind of now got quite a nice balance in terms of what trees and bushes work well in terms of the togetherness in the actual game but also realism for Monaco as well. Now I'll leave you with a little bit of music just whilst we detail and complete the pier area and we'll catch up shortly. Now this segment here was quite difficult to fit a building in. So there are basically these little small hotel-y buildings just sitting on the, the dock itself between these hotels and the road. And this was probably the best building that I could find that worked well enough when you use PO to adapt the size. And I was quite pleased with how it came about in the end because when you make a building of such a size down into a smaller size you normally get a bit of a funny look you sometimes have these flickering edges and whatnot but this worked out really well and despite it not looking perfect for the area i think it does a job i think these buildings really do look good um for this front and it still pulls off a nice look but I didn't want to do the whole thing across and one thing I haven't done in a little while which is quite common in Monaco when you look around pictures and if you visit the actual um, place itself is there's a lot of construction going on and I mean that's common of a lot of places but Monaco in general does have a lot of construction going on quite regular you often see a lot of huge cranes around and obviously with Monaco you can only really build upwards um, there are obviously some projects going on at the moment um, whereby they're trying to build out into the sea, which um, I'm thinking about doing something with that for Monaco towards the end, because I think it'd be quite a nice feature to add in, and it still is part of Monaco, even though I think that I should hopefully complete the project before they complete their project, which um, again is another time scale frame for me to work towards. So I wanted to create something, and the, the idea behind this build here was to make it look like they're going to be building another building such as what we already have on this corner in this spot so using the construction building parts and props from the workshop i think most of these are by beard monkey if i'm not mistaken um, i just wanted to create a very basic but still detailed enough area for the construction um, and I must say I really did enjoy this I'm not sure there's something about building construction stuff that really is fun to do I'm not sure if it's because we are playing this game so much that we are always built well we're always plopping down ready built buildings um, I think the whole feel and look of putting down something that's being created is almost kind of what we do anyway when we play this game but on a tier downwards if that makes sense so that was really fun I really enjoyed this area very different like I said 
um, and I put one of these big cranes in as well because it was just it had to be done really didn't it, it had to I wanted to have that look um, in this in the sort of skyline that we'll have eventually so that was fun that was really good I enjoyed that and we're going to add this feature into the video now, um, a recap overview of what we've done. A lot of people have been asking for save games, etc., to sort of really see the detail of what I've been building. And I thought this recap part at the end of the episode would be a good way to sort of show off what we've done in a bit more detail. We can zoom into some areas and sort of see sort of how that works. So let me know in the comment section below if this would be a good feature for the future videos. Um, and we'll carry on from there. But anyway, let's jump into this. So the heliport, yes, all functions. We've got some helicopters going around. I could probably change which ones we have landing here. I think this is a, this is a, a, this is an ambulance one. Um, but that area looks really nice. I really enjoyed this build. Um, the helipad itself, I think, works really nice. Um, there's something about it that just looks it looks really nice um, and it really does pop with this post office building here it really suits it well and it's a really nice model actually um, and again the car parks etc should hopefully fill up over time when the people come over but look at that the skyline with these massive mountains in the background it really is starting to come alive and this is what I really love about Monaco now the palm trees the clouds the everything it just looks it just looks good and I'm really pleased with how it's all coming about now. It really is taking shape. And I was really pleased with the little filler areas here as well. Um, in general, it's working, it's functional. Um, putting down some of the trees as well, really pleased with how this looks. And the combination, sometimes when you combine different buildings together, they don't quite work. However, these worked really well. I really did enjoy putting these down. and. As long as you match up the look of them um, and they are the same shape or at least the same color you can really get some good looks out of this and the look there I, I really really please looks really good and it's just nice when all these parts come together like we've had this building here on the corner for absolutely ages with nothing around it and now we've got this all enclosed in and the, the gaps been you know sealed off so to speak um, it just just makes things look complete and that's what we're going for here and that's pretty much bringing us to the end let's just have a, another look around here at the construction site but guys thank you all very much for your continued support it really does help me in the channel and uh, yeah if you did enjoy the episode please hit that like button to get us seen by more people and uh, a little comment also goes a long way love this backdrop look here where you can see what we worked on in the Monaco Ville all coming together it, it, it's just it's taking shape and I'm, I'm sorry I know I'm sort of blowing my own trumpet in a sense here but um, it's just the way that things are coming together now it really is making Monaco pop and it's got me so excited into building the next episode that we have actually already started that so um, I'm not sure what will come the following week it might be an Isle of Wight episode I'm not too sure but to stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and you'll find out for sure. Other than that, guys, I'm going to leave you with some cinematics of what we've built today. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend and all the best.